Hi, welcome to Breathe Better with Elizabeth. I'm Elizabeth. Today I'm going to go over CO2 retention. This is a really tricky subject, so I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible. Now, CO2 is another word for carbon dioxide. So um, anytime we say CO2, we're referring to carbon dioxide. To fully understand CO2 retention, it's important that you understand the process that your body goes through when it takes a breath. So when you breathe in, you know that air is gonna go into your lungs and it's gonna get the oxygen and it's gonna let the oxygen go into your bloodstream, okay? Once it's in your bloodstream, it's gonna go to the vital organs and tissues and then it's gonna go back out and you're going to breathe out, okay? So with every breath that you take in, you're breathing in oxygen. Every time you breathe out, you are exhaling CO2. This is the procedure of breathing. So the gas exchange itself actually takes place in little sacs called the alveoli. I have drawn them a little bit bigger down here just so you can kind of see. But basically, they're at the um, distal ends of your lungs, okay? And they are where the gas exchange takes place. So, if you're not getting air to the ends of your lungs and to these alveoli, you're not going to be getting your oxygen in and you're not going to be blowing your CO2 off. Um, one of the reasons why intentional breathing or breathing exercises when you suffer from um, lung problems is so important, but that's a, that's a different thing. So um, the gas exchange takes place in the alveoli. Now, what can happen when you have COPD, emphysema, is that the little walls that make up the alveoli become damaged and they start to break down. So what this does is it reduces the elasticity of the alveoli. Think of it like a balloon. You breathe in, your alveoli pop open, exhale. If these walls are broken down, you're breathing in, but you're not breathing all of that CO2 out because you can't fully breathe out. So this is how you end up with CO2 retention if it's caused by a lung problem. Um, there are other things that cause it. I'm going to focus just on the lungs. So um, some of the symptoms of this are going to be dizziness, confusion, shortness of breath, headache, and even unconsciousness. So this is very, very important that if you are a CO2 retainer, which is what they call people who have a tendency to hold on to CO2, it's important that you understand the symptoms and that you do whatever you can to prevent it from occurring acutely. So um, if it does occur acutely, you're confused or unconscious, you go to the emergency room, what they're going to do is put you on what's called a BiPAP. What that BiPAP is going to do is it's going to force you to take deep breaths, which is going to help you blow out CO2. So um, I know whenever I've worked in the ER, um, people are very resistant to wearing this BiPAP because it feels like you're smothering and it, you don't want to wear that when you're already short of breath. But it is a measure to keep you off of the ventilator. Um, it is uncomfortable, yes, but it will help blow off CO2. So um, another thing that you can do, so this is just day to day, are the breathing exercises. So important because when you have COPD or emphysema, you don't have any problem breathing it in as long as you're not suffering from an exacerbation or short of breath at the time. When you breathe in, you can breathe it in, alveoli open, but you have a hard time breathing back out. So you always wanna make sure that you're using your diaphragm to breathe. That's going to make you breathe from the bottom of your lungs to the top. And then when you blow out, you wanna use pursed lips because that's going to create a back pressure in these alveoli. It's gonna help you blow the air off. You want to make sure you're blowing off the air or exhaling twice as long as what you breathe in. So you inhale, 
And then you're gonna exhale. That is going to help you blow off CO2. It's going to help you blow out the extra air that you tend to hold into your lungs. Um, if you're somebody who chronically holds CO2 in your blood, um, it's important to do this, these types of exercises every day and you want to intentionally do them as you go throughout the day because if you get in a hurry, um, it, whenever you get short of breath, if you're not breathing in enough to get to the alveoli, none of this is gonna work, okay? So if you're breathing in fast, your air is not getting where it needs to go. Your alveoli are not staying open as long as they need to stay open. And the gas exchange is gonna be all messed up. So this is so important. Um, practice breathing exercises every day so that when you do get in a bind where you're having trouble breathing, your body's just gonna naturally go to those breathing exercises. You don't have to think about it as much. Take in your slow, deep breaths and just let your body do the work. Now, if you're having any of the symptoms, especially the confusion, dizziness, drowsiness, you need to go to the doctor, okay? That means something is wrong and it needs to be corrected, okay? The CO2, the more it builds up in your system, it messes up your body's pH balance. If your body's pH balance is messed up, it's going to try to compensate by working your kidneys a little bit harder, okay? So you don't want that because then you've got kidney problems on top of breathing problems. So um, just very important, if you notice any of the symptoms, just make sure you go to the doctor, have it checked out. Um, as always, if you have any questions, just jot them down. I've probably forgot something. Um, so <clears throat> don't worry about asking questions. I'll definitely try to answer them. Thank you.